Hello and welcome to Social Church. We're really happy to be recording the testimony of Derek Asaze today. Derek, as many of you will know, is a professional boxer and is also known as a boxing preacher. I can't wait to hear this. Over to you, Derek. Hi, this is Derek Asaze and this is my testimony. Um, so, well, where did it all begin? So, I have to take you back to uh, my conception uh, where I was born. So, um, I was born in 1983. I'm 25 years old. Um, I was born in a little well known city called Peckham in South East London. Um, I'd always grown up in a Christian household. Um, I grew up as a Catholic. So, I went to Catholic school, and funny enough, I happened to be um, an altar server. So, I used to be one of the guys that used to help the, the priest out during the Mass. Now, funny thing is how I got into that was because one day I used to get into quite a bit of trouble at school. Um, and one day I was standing outside the headmaster's office as that was my usual place. Um, and the parish priest happened to be walking by and thought that it would be a good idea for me to start coming to church a lot more as an altar server um, to help out my behaviour. But um, it helped, but I guess it didn't really help eradicate um um, my behaviour um, throughout school I struggled with anger management issues so um, I used to get into trouble a lot just because um, I would have a very short fuse um, I would get very annoyed quickly and so that's something I dealt with um, as a young teenager all throughout my teenage years um, so for me I would say where did the testimony really begin I feel like there's been different important points I'd say the first part of my testimony would be so year 10, um, I've been excluded from school probably more than 15, 20 times. I was on the verge of getting kicked out. Um, I'd been in various anger management classes and courses. Um, I'd been through counselling and basically I was on the cusp of being kicked out and leaving school with no GCSEs. And it was age 15 where um, I, um, one of my friends, so I was always an active individual. I played loads of different sports, you know, um, I played for my school football team, rugby team, basketball team. So I loved my, um, I loved my sports, and I always followed sports. And um, a friend of me said, a friend of mine said, "Why don't you try the sport of boxing?" Now I'd always watched boxing. <coughs> my family, I grew up watching the likes of Roy Jones, Dennis Lewis. So I thought, and he said that it would be really, really good to help with your anger management. And um, so, age fifteen, um, I found a local boxing club, just an attempt to keep out of trouble, and the rest was history. It went from a hobby to a passion to a lifestyle. Now, funny enough, I really believe that it was God that led me to the sport of boxing because it was around the same time in that same year that I sort of kind of um, started to, you know, pursue Christ off my on my own. Um, luckily, at the, at the same time when I found boxing, we had a school chaplain who basically um, started um, these lunchtime prayer sessions and prayer meetings, which I started to attend with some of my friends. And I felt like it was so synonymous with me sort of kind of starting to pursue Christ on my own and also finding the sport of boxing where I felt like God, it was, God, thought it was, God knew it was definitely part of my purpose. Um, so, yeah, so that took me to like age 16. Now, of course, you can imagine the walk of Christ is... is, is 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 a very difficult path that like obviously I've faced, faced a lot of challenges on the way. Um, so fast forward, um, three years later, age 19, um, I would move out of um, London, uh, where I'm from, and I would attend university. So I moved to a place called Nottingham, where I did a degree in business management, um, and I got a master in sports psychology. Now, funny enough, up until this point, um, living at home, you know, on a Sunday, going to church was just the, the normal thing that we did, you know, it was just standard to me. But it was only until I moved away, you know, I'm living on my own, and I actually realised that I couldn't identify why I went to church. The only thing I could say was, it was just what we were meant to do on a Sunday. Um, so, for me, when I moved out and I was living on my own, without my mum being there to wake me up, I couldn't really identify the reason of why I was going in the first place. So, there was, I'll say, a long period of maybe two, one or two years where I sort of struggled to commit to a church because I felt like I was just going um, for the sake of... So throughout my first and second year of uni, I would say that I I was backsliding and I wasn't taking my faith seriously. I always knew God was there, 
But um, I was the type of person that, you know, I would take it serious tomorrow. <laughs> I was always putting things off like, you know, okay, I'm going to I'm gonna go to church next week. And, I'm, and the funniest thing is I knew a church fellowship called Radical Youth, that they were society at the university. I signed up my first year and I kept saying I'll go next week. And I didn't go for two years. Now, <laughs> fast forward to my final year of uni, so I'm age 20 going on 21. And it wasn't like there was anything that happened to me or, you know, there was no near-death experience. I could just remember one day I was just sitting in my room and I just sat there and I just felt like some, there was some, I, was, I felt some sort of emptiness, like something was missing. Now, I'd always knew that God was in my life and I, I'd always felt like God was calling me, but it was that moment when I sat there and I just made a, a conscious decision to myself to really pursue God with all my heart and rededicate my life to Christ. And one of the first scriptures I stumbled across was Matthew 6, 33, which says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. So I took that scripture literally and I just ran with it. Um, like I said, I just sat there in my room one day and I made the decision that I want to take my faith seriously. I want to take God seriously because I feel like it's a void in my life that's been missing. Um, and so, long story short, so this was October 2014 when I said I rededicated my life to Christ and I made the decision. Now, <laughs> what happened after that was, it was a bit of a fast track. Like it, was, it was just amazing how God began to move in my life. So, October 2014 is when I rededicated my life to Christ. By the end of October 2014, I would bump into, you know, <laughs> my wife of today. Um, so I met my, my, my wife that I'm married to now within three or four weeks of rededicating my life to Christ. By November 2014, um, obviously I, I started attending a fellowship um, at my uni radical youth and um, it was from then that God spoke to me and wanted me to sort of become the next leader um, for that fellowship, considering uh, I'd only been part of the fellowship for a few months. And then shortly after that, God will confirm um, that my wife uh, was my wife. Shortly after that, within the space of three or four months, God will also speak to me and tell me that I was going to be a pastor. So <laughs> it was it was, it was was funny how fast track it was, how things just went from zero to 100 really quickly because, you know, October 2014, I'm sitting there and I've rededicated my life to Christ. Within the space of three months, I rededicated my life to Christ. I met my wife. Um, I discovered my purpose, which was to be a pastor. And I also discovered that part of my purpose is that I will lead um, the Christian fellowship. And so... The rest was, was, was history from then. I feel like from that moment that I knew that my purpose and I knew my calling, I knew the other half of my purpose, my wife, and I knew that I was going to be a pastor, everything just changed. I feel like my whole mentality changed and my thinking towards everything um, just changed. And um, now where did boxing fit into this? Now, boxing has always been a part of my life, you know, um, since the age of 15, since I started. And um, it's funny how the two coincide uh, because I feel like God used boxing to help draw me closer to him and I also feel like without God I would have quit boxing a long time ago so um, obviously with a sport like boxing it's, 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 it's a very demanding sport it's very challenging we deal with a lot of we deal with a lot of things that people don't see such as injuries setbacks there's a lot of sacrifice you have to make so I'm at, at times when you know, I've gone through injuries and faced setbacks that were sometimes out of my control. It's really my faith in God that kept me grounded because I knew that God called me to do this and it's something that he wanted to achieve through it. And on the other hand, you know, I believe that God led me to boxing because he knew how much it would change my life. Like, I feel like boxing helped me, me I am to make, help me be the man I am today. And that was, and that was down to God. So the two have always been synonymous. Um, so long story short, so um, in Sep so from September 2016 to September 2017, I was a leader of my um, Christian Youth Society, Radical Youth. Um, I then went on to, after my master's, I worked in my church full-time for a year, um, working in the admin um, department. Um, later that year, I would get married in September 2017, and the following year, oh, sorry, also in September 2017, I would also become a professional boxer, and then early 2018, I would be ordained as a minister and a youth pastor. 
Um, so right now, I'm a professional boxer. Um, I've had nine fights. And to the glory of God, I've had nine wins. I'm undefeated. Um, I'm happily married um, to my wife, um, Sope, and I'm currently a youth pastor now. You know, she goes to our ministries. Now, if you told me all of this, um, this would be the story, my story, four or five years ago, I probably would have laughed because I'd say just about four or five years ago, um, I just felt like there was a, a part of my life that just felt very empty and I felt like it wasn't going anywhere until I made that decision to rededicate my life to Christ. And I always told people in the church, you know, especially some of the young people I come into contact with that it's not really how you start, it's how you finish. Because um, I didn't start well, like I said, people don't believe me when I swear, when I tell them that, you know, I used to get in trouble out of school, I was always getting kicked out of school. Funny enough, I used to get in trouble for fighting and I used to get in trouble for talking. And it's funny how that those are two, those two elements are part of my calling because I'm a professional boxer, I fight in the ring. And as a pastor, I preach from the pulpit. <laughs> Hence why the nickname was given to me, the punch and preacher, because I do punch and I do preach. So um, I always want to tell people that's not how you start, it's how you finish. And, you know, there's a scripture that says in Philippians 1.6 that, you know, a God will finish the good works he has begun in you. And um, I really feel like even the times, even at my lowest times, when I felt like God wasn't there, God was always there. And he was just waiting for me to make that decision just to, to surrender my all to him. And since I've done that, I can't emphasize how much God has played a massive impact in my life. And without God, I am nothing and I would have achieved nothing, you know. Um, and it's just amazing that right now I feel blessed to be able to be a youth pastor and have um, such a, play such an important role in many young people's lives in our ministry. I feel blessed to, to have the platform that I do as a professional boxer to also help preach the gospel because I believe that everything that I've achieved up until now, everything I, I am is all glory to God, you know. So um, in everything I do, I try to give the glory back to God. So um, for me, I would say the main thing is, for me, my testimony, I would say is that without God, I'm nothing. Without God, I would have achieved nothing. And without God, I certainly wouldn't be where I am today. And if there's a main message I want to get across with my testimony, it's not how you start, it's how you finish. And the God that God has begun in you, he will finish. Um, I really hope my testimony will help encourage someone to know that, you know, God can really use anyone. You know, um, if you told me a few years ago that I would be a pastor, um, I would have probably laughed. But um, to see what God has done through my life now, what God is continuing to do, it's amazing. Um, so I feel like if there's anyone listening to this now and so you're a bit, you, you feel like you, you feel that same emptiness that I was talking about that I felt and you feel like something's missing and you feel like God is calling you and you feel like there's a void that only God can fill, then I want you just to take this opportunity and just speak all your heart, um, just speak to God and just say a prayer and just say that God, you know, and from this moment forward, I want to surrender my all to you, that, you know, and from this moment forth, I know now, I now declare that, you know, my life is not my own, but my life belongs to you, and I want to live for you, I want to live with you, and I want you, your presence to go with me, all that I do, and I want my life to reflect your glory, and say that prayer wholeheartedly to God, and make a declaration that has from that moment forward that you declare to live for God and everything to his glory. And you will see how God will move in your life and you will see the things that you will achieve through Christ. So yeah, man, I really hope this blesses someone. God bless all of you. Um, I pray that, you know, as I've had the testimony and my testimony still continues to, 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 to grow bigger and bigger, that also you will have a testimony in Jesus' name and may God continue to bless you. And I pray that he's, his presence and his favor will go with you in all that you do wherever you go. In Jesus' name, amen. So this is my testimony. Um, I want to say a massive shout out to the social church. Please follow, like, and subscribe to their YouTube channel. They are doing amazing things. Check out their website as well, socialchurch.com. Um, and yeah, love and blessings to everyone. God bless you all. Take care. Uh, Derek, thank you so much. That's such a brilliant testimony and so encouraging. If you would like to give your testimony, we would love to hear from you. 
you can contact us via our website www.wearesocialchurch.com or you can contact us on any of our social media platforms we're on all the usual ones facebook twitter instagram linkedin we can't wait to hear from you thanks a lot for listening today bye for now